Listening activity number eleven. You will hear an interview between a reporter and an officer from the British Council. As you listen, fill in the gaps and answer the following questions. In recent years, more and more foreign students have been coming to the UK to study. But when they first arrive, many students are unsure of the formalities they have to follow, and even where to go for help. So we have Alan McLean from the British Council here today to offer some advice. Alan, first of all, where do overseas students get help when they have problems at college? Well, the welfare office of the student union can provide students with information and advice on all aspects of college life and living in the UK. The college will also have a counsellor for overseas students. Who will specifically look after the interest of foreign students? They can also put you in touch with overseas students societies and organisations, which are often run by overseas students. So, as you can see, there's quite an extensive support service for the students, and new arrivals shouldn't feel they have to tackle problems alone. Indeed. So, what formalities should students coming from abroad complete upon first arriving? One important thing is to register with the police. The stamp, which will have been put in the student passport by the immigration officer, indicates whether or not they are required to register with the police. If you are from the European Community or the Commonwealth, or if you intend to stay in the United Kingdom for less than six months, you should not have to register with the police. So not all overseas students have to register with the police. But if you are not from an EEC or Commonwealth country, presumably you must register. That's right. If you are required to register with the police, you must do so within seven days of arrival in Britain. You must also inform the police every time you change your address while you are in the United Kingdom. And what do you have to bring for registration? You will need to take your passport, of course, and two passport-sized photographs of yourself. If you are living in London, you should go to Ten Lambs Conduit Street, London WC1. It opens 9 a.m. to 4:45 p.m. Monday to Friday. In other parts of the country, you should go to the nearest police station for advice on where to register. There is a charge of £25 for registration. I see. So your passport, two passport-sized photos, and £25. Mm-hmm. Another important thing is that holders of student visas aren't usually entitled to claim state benefit or to work. Attempting to do so may affect your right to stay in the United Kingdom. You might be prosecuted and fined about five hundred pounds. It will say on your visa whether you are entitled to get a job in the UK or not. So that's something non-resident students should be aware of. Working in Britain without permission is a criminal offence. But if they are entitled to get a job in the UK, how do they go about finding one? If you are allowed to work, you will need to get forms O W one and O W five. These can be picked up at any job centre, where work permits for overseas students can now be issued. The O W one form is filled out by your prospective employer. And return to the job centre along with your passport and a letter from your college, indicating that the employment will not interfere with your studies. If you are looking for work experience or practical learning, you must get forms O W twenty one and O W twenty two from the work experience section of the Department of Employment. You will be asked for proof of the purpose and intended length of stay here. And that you are going to return to your native country. Well, I hope that will answer a few questions for overseas students. Thank you very much for coming in, Alan. Listening activity number twelve. You're going to listen to a talk about the student union. As you listen. Fill in the gaps and answer the following questions. Now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the student union in this college. 
all full-time students automatically belong to the student union and have voting and membership rights, which means you can vote in union meetings and in election for the student officers. Part-time students also have access to what the union has to offer. Further details of this are available from the student union offices. The union is affiliated to the National Union of Students, NUS, which represents students on a nationwide level. Through the student union and its parent body, students can take advantage of reduced price travel facilities, Ensley Insurance, the main student insurance company, and a wide range of reductions on consumer goods through the student discount card. The Social Committee of the Student Union organises dances and other entertainments, including the Folk Club, Womb Cinema, and the Third Eye, which caters for a more developed taste in music, theatre, art and poetry. The Student Union also finances over 20 clubs and societies for a wide range of interests. You can get details of these from the Student Union offices. Listening activity number 13. You are going to hear a conversation between a student and an accommodation officer. As you listen, fill the missing information in the notes below and then indicate whether the following statements are true or false. Now listen to the conversation. Janet has just come down to London for the day. In September, she will be studying at university and she needs to find somewhere to live. Janet goes to an accommodation agency which she knows is offering free advice. Hello, can I help you? Yes, I'm soon to be studying here in London and I need to find somewhere to live. OK, have a seat and I will look through some places with you. What type of accommodation are you looking for? Well, obviously, I need somewhere quite cheap. But I don't really know much about the kind of places which are available. Perhaps you can tell me about some. Right. I'll start with self-contained flats. Now, these are the most expensive option out of the list I have here. You'll usually have to sign a tenancy agreement of some sort and pay a deposit and one month's advance rent. Although the flats are expensive, you'll find you have your freedom to do what you want. Are there any other kinds of place? Well, let's see. If you still want your freedom, you could try bedsitters. With this, you would have to share the kitchen and bathroom. Aren't there any places where I could get meals? There are lodgings. Here you will receive breakfast and sometimes half board. That is breakfast and evening meal. You would usually pay your rent weekly to a landlord who lives on the premises. Lodgings are usually more expensive than bedsitters as you receive a meal also hostels, which are very similar in price to lodgings. Would I have my own kitchen facilities then? No, you usually have to share. You could try looking through the local paper for a flat or a house share. Or why don't you try the accommodation office on your university? I didn't know there was one. Yes, and they might get you a room in the halls of residence with other students. You share a kitchen and washing facilities with the other students, also, they may be able to offer you a list of other cheap accommodation in the area. That's your best option. Thank you for your help. Listening activity number 14. You are going to listen to a talk about Cambridge. First, look at the notes below and questions 8 to 11. As you listen, fill in the gaps and answer questions 8 to 11. Now listen to the talk. Just one hour north of London lies the University City of Cambridge, which, for 700 years, has been one of the world's most important centres of learning. The academic vitality of the city and its sheer physical beauty combined to produce 
the perfect atmosphere in which to study. Like the other students here, you will enjoy privileges which are unique to the Cambridge way of life. During your free time, you might like to wander along the backs, the lawns which slope gently down to the River Cam, or try your hand at punting on the river itself. Equally relaxing is a cycle ride through the town centre. Here you can practice your English in the charming old marketplace, meet other students in a traditional English pub, or pay a visit to one of the city's world renowned museums. Afterwards, if you are still feeling energetic, there are facilities for every kind of sport. Although London is only a short journey away, Cambridge will tempt you with entertainments of its own. You can watch Britain's finest actors and musicians in performance, see the latest films, or dine in one of Cambridge's excellent restaurants. In addition, the university social functions provide the perfect chance to make new friends and improve your English at the same time. Listening activity number 15. You are going to hear a talk about skunks. As you listen, fill in the gaps in the notes below and then indicate whether the following statements are true or false. Now listen to the talk. If you ask people which animals they hate or fear the most, chances are you'll hear the following. Skunks, bats, snakes and rats. But some of these animals are gaining new respect. Most people fear the skunks because of their awful smell, for example. But recently, people have begun to rethink their ideas about skunks. Skunks are very useful animals, says animal researcher Cherry Briggs. They catch rats and mice and beetles. They're great for pest control. Skunks are very fair. They always warn you before they spray. They raise their tails and stamp their front feet. It's also good to know that you can spot a skunk before it sees you. We recognise the skunk by its white stripe. But skunks are very near-sighted and can't see more than three feet ahead. So if you pay attention to the skunk's warning signs and move away, you probably won't get sprayed. Most people would not be too pleased if a skunk moved in under their house and here is some advice on how to get rid of the creatures. First of all, skunks hate rap music, so if you play loud rap music, skunks generally will move away from your house after a few hours. Also, they love cheese, especially cheddar, so you can just put some cheese a few feet away from your house. When the skunk leaves to get the cheese, block the holes so it can't get back in. But mostly, skunks just want to be left alone to do their work, which is pest control. Some people who get rid of skunks now actually want them back.